Your Honor, opposing counsel, may it please the court, Attorney Angie Kelly, on behalf of the appellant, Sergei Aikovets. Question, I would like to reserve three minutes for rebuttal, please. Yes. Question for the court's consideration today is whether the court erred by allowing rebuttal evidence of Dr. Steiner during the course of the trial. The purpose of rebuttal evidence, which is in the discretion of the trial court, is to explain, refute, or disprove new facts introduced into evidence by the adverse party. I focus on the term new facts in this instance. What Judge Callahan said when she overruled the objection of the defense as to whether or not there could be rebuttal testimony in this case is that the issue was temporary brittle bone disease and that that had not been addressed in the case in chief. That was an error and, in our opinion, rises to the level of an abuse of discretion to allow that testimony to take place. If you look at the transcript on page 381, the Dr. Melville, the expert that was called during the state's case in chief, was asked on direct, introduced by the state, not by the defense, about temporary brittle bone disease, what it was, and whether or not it had been addressed. Dr. Melville stated that he actually gave consideration to the family history of this child in determination of whether or not that might be a possible reason for the injuries. Therefore, the state actually introduced the evidence that was at issue as opposed to the defense, which is what the trial court made the finding of. So it's our position that that error rises to an abuse of discretion and that this testimony should not have been allowed at all. However, the court does, in fact, find that it was appropriate for rebuttal testimony to be brought into this case, that it went way beyond the scope of what the court said that it was supposed to be. And the court said temporary brittle bone disease. When Dr. Steiner was called, what really actually happened was the state got a second opportunity to put yet another child abuse expert on the stand and reiterate the opinion of the first child abuse expert in this case, going over everything. He confirmed the diagnosis. He discussed abusive head trauma. He offered an opinion on how this child received the injuries that it got. It basically gave the state a second opportunity to take a bite of that apple, which is inappropriate. Rebuttal is supposed to refute new evidence, not allow the state or a plaintiff, in other cases, to be able to introduce evidence that they should have brought up in their case in chief, and they didn't. And that's what happened in this case. The second question for the court's consideration would be whether or not the child endangering conviction, as contained in count four of the indictment only, was against the manifest weight of the evidence. This is an injury that relates to fractured ribs on this child. The state's expert, Dr. Melville, testified multiple times that these were healing fractures that the child presented with when she was brought to Akron Children's Hospital. The testimony was that these injuries had taken place seven to ten days prior to the December 21st trip to the emergency room by the family. That's the state's evidence. They offered nothing in support of that to correlate between that time frame and the defendant. Everything that was presented by the state was in regards to injuries at the time that she was presented to ER. But there was nothing offered that would say whether he was caring for the child prior to the date of December 21st, 2014, if his wife was at home, if there was a babysitter, if he actually had the opportunity to inflict the injury on the child. So basically they're asking you to make an inference from if he did this, then he must have done this too because it happened over a week in advance. We feel that that is clearly insufficient evidence, or I'm sorry, against the manifest weight of the evidence that does not support a conviction for child endangering in this case. Thank you. Okay. May it please the court, counsel, Heaven D. Martino on behalf of the state of Ohio, the appellee. We are asking that this court affirm the convictions and that the evidence in this case does, in fact, show that Mr. Iacobese committed the offenses for which he was convicted and that the verdict is not against the weight of the evidence. 
Uh, the evidence in this case showed that while the child was in the care of the father, uh, the child began crying and fussing. The child was taken to the emergency room with facial bruises, torso bruises, um, had seizures. Um, there was possible uh, hemorrhaging due to um, some type of non-accidental trauma. The medical evidence showed that this child had a fracture to the neck and that all of these type of injuries are consistent with basically a shaken baby syndrome and that there were injuries and fractures that were in a state of healing. The mother uh, testified, uh, the, the evidence in the record was that the father had held the child other times and maybe squeezed the child a little bit too hard, um, jostled her around but never seriously shaking the child on page 400. So there is evidence that the father um, did hold the child, shake the child at other times. Um, I know there's a, another report here, father said he shook the patient a little bit and uh, gestured mildly moving his hands back and forth with regard to that that date. Uh, mother talked about prior issues where father kind of hugged the child too hard or kissed the child too hard. So there is evidence that father did physically care for the child. Um, the issue with the state's witness um, on direct was talking about why um, there were questions asked while, while taking the history and that if there is an issue with brittle bone disease, that that's part of what they would take during an intake, they would ask those questions. Then the defense put on their expert who talked about more in depth about brittle bone disease and other things. Then the state called Dr. Steiner to rebut all of the things that Dr. Young had talked about and Dr. Steiner gave an opinion on whether or not there was even such a thing as brittle bone disease. So based on the presentation of the evidence and the manner in which the evidence came in, the state would argue that the court did not abuse its discretion in allowing Dr. Steiner to come in on rebuttal, specifically to address the new statements that were made by the defense expert, even though there had been a basically passing mention uh, during direct examination in the state's case in chief. Uh, based on what I previously stated as well as what is in the brief, the state would argue that there is evidence to show that the healing fractures were in fact caused by the father who had previously cared for the child and um, had been noted to be a little bit more um, physical, I suppose, than he needed to be, and that is consistent with the type of injuries as well as the healing fractures that were testified in this case. And if there are no questions, You want to hear about? No, 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 thank you. All right, well, Council, thank you for presenting your arguments to the court. Uh, the court will take the